everyone so welcome to the video for the lee chatelier's principle it is the chemical equilibrium part 5 and the last one please watch this video till the end because i shall be deriving very 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 important things here and you would try to see that how we can derive the things here instead of cramming them with the help of simple mathematics so first of all the lee chatelier principle states that whenever we have an equilibrium let me say a goes into b plus c where everything is in the gaseous phase it tries to resist the change that is occurring on it now what is the meaning of change and why does it try to resist let us see so we have taken this equilibrium reaction our first case is where we take the effect of volume on it what we are doing we increase the volume finally like let me say that initial volume v1 was equal to some v the final volume v2 is equal to some v dash okay it has been transferred to another container so what is the relation between these two the relation is that v dash would be greater than v okay so that is the condition which we are taking here so first of all at time t is equal to 0 we can say that for this particular equilibrium a goes into b plus c we have this to be a this to be b and this to be c okay what is the delta n for this reaction delta n is equal to on the right hand side we have two gaseous moles so 1 plus 1 minus on the left hand side we have one gaseous mole so 1 so delta n is equal to 1 which is basically greater than 0 so this condition has also been taken into consideration now what we can say from here the value of kc would be equal to b upon v raised to power 1 into c upon v raised to power 1 whole upon a upon v raised to power 1 So from here we can cancel out one b. We get the value as b c upon a v. So this is the k c for this reaction. Let me say that is some equation number one. Now what is the q c for this reaction? The q c when the volume is increased. Okay. The q c for that reaction when the volume is changed. That is from v to v dash. We change the container for which the volume is changed. So q c for the volume is increased would be equal to b. upon v dash into c upon v dash whole upon a upon v dash and everything is basically raised to power 1 now you would be guessing that why i am not taking the kc here why i am not taking the kc because kc only depends on temperature the relation is not written here but it only depends on temperature so if you change the concentration if you change the volume if you change the pressure nothing would happen the kc would remain the same as long as temperature is constant but the qc would change i am i made the video on it so what you can see from here this value would come out to be equal to bc upon av dash let me say this is some equation number 2 okay so what you can see from here what is the relation between qc and kc we know that v dash is greater than v so we can assume in our head let me say v dash is equal to some 2 uh, here this is some equal to 1 so this is divided by 1 this is divided by 2 which value is greater obviously the equation number 1 would be greater because this is halved okay in our heads so what we can say from here that the value of qc is less than kc as equation number 2 is less than the equation number 1 so this condition holds true so you can see that i have told you the direction in which this mouth opens the reaction moves in that direction so in this reaction we can say that this moves in the forward direction when we have n to be greater than 0 i hope that this point is clear to you what i have done we have taken out kc and qc and just done some basic derivations in order to derive this relation now i'm going to take one more case here where we have the reaction a plus b goes into c okay and similarly here also we do the same thing that the volume is increased finally so we let me say that initial volume is v1 final volume is v2 and v2 is greater than v1 this is the condition what is the delta n for this reaction delta n would be equal to on the right hand side we have one mole minus of on the left hand side we have one plus one So delta n is equal to minus one, which is basically less than zero. So delta n is less than zero for this case, and this volume is increased. So the reaction is given to us as a plus b goes into c. Once again, we take the moles as a, b, and c. So what is the reaction? Uh, what is the Kc for this equilibrium? That is equal to c upon v one raised to power one 
होल अपॉन ए अपॉन वी वन रेस्ट टू पार वन इन टू बी अपॉन वी वन रेस्ट टू पार वन सो वी वन वी वन गेट्स कैंसल आउट वी गेट द इक्वेशन एज सी वी वन होल अपॉन ए बी सो लेट मी से दैट दिस इज अम इक्वेशन नंबर वन नाउ वेन द वॉल्यूम इज इंक्रीज लेट एस ट्राई टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ क्यू सी वेर वी टेक द वॉल्यूम एज वी टू नाउ सो क्यू सी विड बी इक्वल टू सी अपॉन वी टू रेस टू पार वन होल अपॉन ए अपॉन वी टू इन टू बी अपॉन वी टू सो दिस वैल्यू कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू सी इन टू वी टू होल अपॉन ए बी सो लेट मी से दिस इज अम इक्वेशन नंबर टू सो वॉट यू कैन सी फ्रॉम हेयर वन सेकेंड वी ट्राई टू डिराइव द रिलेशन बिटवीन क्यू सी एंड के सी फॉर दिस केस वेर वी टू इज ग्रेटर देन वी वन so take v2 as 2 in your head v1 as 1 in your head so what you can see from here this factor is multiplied by 2 and this is only multiplied by 1 so what 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 is the mathematical relation between these two that the value of this thing should be greater than this thing so what we can say that qc is greater than kc in this case so the mouse opens this side so the reaction moves in this direction so what we can say for here we can say that the reaction moves in the backward direction when we have the value of n is less than 0 okay now let us write in the generalized point on the next page so from the previous page delta n is less than 0 if the volume is increased we get this relation that is the backward reaction we have derived everything okay please don't focus on cramming uh, because everyone cramps this relation okay in the forward reaction we get delta n to be greater than 0 focus on the long term goals instead of the short term dreams by cramming them all right and if delta n is equal to 0 what you can guess from here you can see that the volume would equal to the same basically volume wouldn't exist only because if we would have got the reaction as let me say a plus b goes into c plus d so when you would find out the kc for this reaction that is independent of uh, volume all right because that would cancel out a by b the c by v everything would cancel out and when we have qc that is also independent of volume so if we have the value of delta n to be equal to 0 for the reaction then there is no uh, relation in between the delta n is equal to 0 and the volume change for this thing so what we can say that this is independent or basically no change would occur now i would take the effect of pressure but i would take only one case because obviously you can realize from here delta n greater than 0 would give some x then delta n less than 0 would give the opposite of x so let us begin so the pressure is finally increased basically the same thing for the volume which we have done this is the equation which is given to you we have been given that p1 is equal to some p p2 is equal to p dash mathematical relation is p dash is greater than p that is the final pressure is uh, greater than the initial one all right also we can calculate the delta n for this equation please do everything very carefully understand it very well i will be giving a homework at the end of the video delta n is equal to 1 which is also basically greater than 0 so these two things have been taken into consideration now i want you people to use one thing here because these are all ideal gases which are take, taking into consideration no real gas so we know that pv is equal to nrt okay now you know that from here the number of moles are constant r is a constant temperature is obviously constant otherwise kc would change so the mathematical relation is that p is inversely proportional to volume okay that thing is quite understood okay so let us begin the part time t is equal to 0 a b and c is written here the kc for this reaction would be equal to a by v into b by uh, sorry b by v into c by v whole upon a by v v and v gets cancel out we get the reaction uh, equilibrium constant as bc upon av so let me say that this is some equation number 1 now for the equation number 2 that is equal to qc qc from here would be equal to once again b by v dash into c by v dash whole upon a by v dash we get the reaction quotient as bc upon a v dash that is the equation number Two. Now, what you can do from here further as the volume can be written as in form of pressure. So, Kc from the equation one becomes Bc upon A into volume is inversely proportional to pressure. So, we can write this as one upon P, one upon P. So, it becomes Bc upon A into some pressure P. This is some equation number A. 
Similarly, now QC becomes what? That is equal to BC upon A into 1 by P dash. So this thing becomes BC upon A into P dash. This is some equation B. Now, what is the mathematical relation between P dash and P? That P dash is greater than P. So let me say this is equal to 2. This is equal to 1. We can see that the equation number B is multiplied by a factor 2 and this is only multiplied by a factor 1. So we know that what is the relation between QC and KC from here? that QC would be greater than KC. Okay. Now in which direction this opens, the reaction moves in that direction. So the reaction has to move in this direction. So from here, we can say that the reaction moves in backward direction. Okay. When the pressure is basically increased and Delta N is greater than zero. Similarly, we can say for the Delta N is less than zero that the reaction would move in the forward direction because both of these have to be opposite in the relation. Now let us generalize it here. So the three mathematical possible cases Delta N less than zero, it would move in the forward direction because we have derived that for this it moves in the backward direction. You can similarly derive for the others one also. It's very easy. And here they, there would be no change because the volume terms and the pressure terms would cancel out. Okay. So I hope that this point is clear to you. Now let us understand the effect of temperature, which is mostly confused. Okay. Before that, let me tell you at the end of these videos, you would see the two playlists. Okay. One is for the ionic equilibrium. One is for the thermodynamics. So please invest some time in them watch them. They will save a lot of time for you because you already know that in short, short videos, I try to convey a lot of knowledge. Watch those two videos. These are the best physical chemistry videos on my channel. You would definitely be benefited. All right. So effect of temperature is taken into consideration. We know Delta G is equal to Delta H minus T into Delta S. What is Delta G? Delta G is Gibbs free energy. Delta H is the heat, T is the temperature and this is basically entropy. That is not of importance here. Just see the mathematical relation which I have written here because that will only be used. Okay. So first of all, let us try to see that what is the effect of temperature. I take the reaction as Delta H to be greater than zero. What is this type of reaction known as? This is endothermic reaction. All right. So this is provided here. Delta H is greater than zero. Okay. Now, if we increase the temperature, temperature is increased before that. I hope you people know that Delta G is less than zero. Then the reaction is feasible. That is the reaction wants to occur spontaneous. Delta G is greater than zero. Then the reaction is non feasible. That is not helpful for us. Okay. So if the temperature is increased here. Delta H is greater than zero. Keep uh, take some examples in your head if you're not able to clarify it. So the Delta G would be equal to, let me say Delta H is equal to three minus T into some constant. So this is a constant for us. So let me say it is equal to one. Okay. So Delta G is equal to three minus T. So the temperature is increased. Let me say T one is equal to uh, zero and T two is equal to five. So when we have T one to be equal to zero, we get Delta G to be equal to three. When we have T2 to be equal to five, we get the value of Delta G is equal to minus two. So what you can see from here, what you can realize from here that if the temperature is increased, the Delta G goes on decreasing. Okay. Simple mathematics, the temperature is increased from zero to five. In this case, Delta G goes on decreasing. So what you can say from here, if Delta G goes on decreasing, the reaction becomes feasible. So when the temperature is increased and we have the endothermic reaction, reaction becomes feasible. So it moves in the forward direction. Okay. As simple as that. I have told you many times, if you know mathematics, many things will automatically become very easy for you. So think like this. Okay, so I try to develop your brain because that is the only helpful thing in this on this planet. So if Delta H is less than zero, this is exothermic reaction. Okay, so you can derive for it now. Okay, if T increases, what we can say for here, you, you can guess it very well. Okay, the forward jar hai, here, it would move in the backward direction. Okay, I hope that this point is clear to you. Okay. So I hope that this point is clear because it would be used. I have derived it for you with the help of a very simple example. So that should be kept in your head. The last part uh, and it is a very simple part that is the effect of the catalyst. 
I've discussed in one of my earlier videos that what does a catalyst do? Catalyst job is to increase the rate of the reaction. Rate of the reaction is changed here. Okay, so if the rate is changed here, how does that um, changes the QC? That doesn't change the QC and obviously the KC wouldn't change because KC is only dependent on the temperature. The rate say temperature, there wouldn't be any change. So what you can say from here, effect of catalyst, there is no effect no matter whatsoever happens. Okay, so this was the video regarding this. Let me give you a question for homework and mention in the comment section that what are your doubts? What haven't you understood? Please like the video because that is the major confidence source for us people, uh, for us YouTubers actually. So let us begin with the question. So N2 gaseous plus 3H2 gaseous goes into 2NH3 gaseous. This has been given to you as an exothermic reaction. The question is that should the temperature be decreased or increased in order to have a better yield of NH3? Okay, so this you have to answer decreased or increased in the comment section. Mention all your doubts which you have. Please check out the ionic equilibrium which would occur here and the chemical thermodynamics which would occur here. These are the best playlists that you would ever see. So this was the video. You can check me out on Academy for free organic chemistry and mathematics courses. So thank you and all the best.